everyone and welcome back to my channel. This week I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a tufted beast on the wheel. And by tufted I mean make it kind of look like a tufted couch or what you would usually see in like textiles and how to achieve that sort of texture and surface decoration on a pot. So uh, for example this is another piece that I made with that tufted texture on it. So this is kind of what I mean. This is going to be going over altering on the wheel which is basically when you end up adjusting your piece after it's been thrown while it's still super in that wet state and how to go in and refine your details when it dries up a little bit so let's get started so first things first is we want to throw our pot and this could really be any sort of bowl mug you know vase that you want it to be just as long as it's bulbous in the end. So we have ourselves our form and now this is in a pretty wet state where things will end up moving if we touch it. That's kind of the point for this part is we want to get this right off of the wheel. So the first thing you wanna do is start to make the indentations. I like to just kind of find the middle here and you can either take a knuckle or a fingertip. I have nails, so I'm gonna go with my knuckle. I'll turn this aside so you can see it. Just push that out. I'm gonna stick my inside hand in here to kind of just go over the inside, make sure it doesn't bump in the entire side. Just to make that little sort of dimple right there. Now, looking at the top of this, I can see that the exact opposite side is right here. So I'm gonna go right for the middle. I usually like to break things into quadrants when I end up doing this technique. So now that I have my two sides, I can kind of even it out in these other corners here. So we can see that I have four little dimples here on each side. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and offset them with two. Because typically um, when you do this with fabric, you have to kind of attach at an angle. And so we're like string things together at an angle. And so we're gonna go above and below, right in between each one of these. So that way you will end up having Kind of your spots mapped out for you once you have those initial four. Now really feel free to go in and just kind of adjust and bump things out as you see necessary in this stage. You wanna do it while, you know, you can still move it. Cause once it starts to get to leather hard, you're not gonna be able to move it like this anymore. I like to really exaggerate mine. So I'll go over this usually a couple of times. And I think that's about good. Now, the main reason that I like to keep this still on the wheel head, you saw that I didn't cut this off yet. It's because after this step is over, I like to adjust my rim to make sure that this is still in a circular shape because after altering for a bit, most of the time your rim's gonna be kind of messed up. And if you still want that circular shape or to still be able to trim later, you're gonna wanna fix this. It's not gonna be perfect, but at least it's going to somewhat resemble a circle 
There we go. Awesome. So now we can cut this off. I always use a screwdriver to get my fats out of this. All right. And there, we have just kind of a lumpy pot. But hey, our rim is tidy, so we're good for now. All right, so now we're gonna wait for this to get about leather hard, and we'll come back to it. All right, everyone, so I have waited about a day for this, and now it's kind of at that point where it's just about leather hard. It's still a little bit softer, but I kind of like to keep it a little bit more malleable, um, especially for this particular process. So let's go ahead and trim a little bit. I'm gonna be careful that when I trim, I don't take too much off the bottom because we really don't want to disrupt this pattern that we already have going on here. that's about enough I just like to kind of clean it up a little bit and I can do a little more with my hand later but this is still a bit to a point where I can keep moving it so if I feel like you know this may not be as exaggerated as I want or anything like that I can still kind of move this so the next thing I want to do is start making our lines now I use a couple of different tools for this you can use what you have around um, first one is a needle tool the second one is kind of like this like hooky type thing and the third one in my favorite is the diamond core v-tip i believe it's a p1 on their website but essentially what we're going to want to do is map out our lines and so i'm going to take all of my little indents here and i'm going to kind of connect them so i'm going to take my top ones and we're going to go across and we're going to connect from the tops and same thing with the bottoms and with these center ones you're going to kind of do this sort of like x now you can just go in with a needle or you can go in with this sort of hooked tool and carve out a little bit more depending on how deep you want that design. Um, and my personal favorite, the diamond core, which will really take out a lot more clay there. So we're gonna go ahead and do that all over this cup. I fast forwarded a little bit you'll see I have all of my lines connected all the way across now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make our kind of uh, ripples where our buttons typically would end up going and if you look at any sort of tufted couches or photos for reference there you'll see that they all kind of have those like ripples usually where the fabric will kind of get bunched up as it goes into the dip so to recreate that I usually will go in and carve three lines or more or less, depending on, you know, the size and shape of your pot in between each one of these little X's. That one only fit too, but it's fine. So you can kind of see how that goes. So we're gonna do a couple more. I have my lines all around my cup. One more final thing that I like to do before him is I like to get kind of a wet paintbrush and go through and soften up each of these little cracks because sometimes they can come off a bit angular and angular when fired typically equates to it turning up sharp. So I usually kind of like to go over it with a paintbrush just to make sure that when it gets fired and it has glaze on it that our edges are still soft and comfortable to hold on to. So. Now, our final thing that we want to do is add in our buttons. So I ended up making all these little balls to make this process a bit faster for you guys. Basically, now we're just gonna add those in. So we're gonna slip and score all of our little indents here. We'll add a little bit of slip in there. And I've already scored all of these just to get ahead of it. 
We're just gonna push those in there. it all right everyone so there you have it that is how we make a tufted looking pot on the wheel so if you liked it go ahead and hit like subscribe and i will see you all next week